Ginger Runner. What is up everybody, Ethan Newberry here, the Ginger Runner with another GingerRunner.com review. Today we will be reviewing a shoe from Ultra. It is the brand new Ultra Lone Peak 2.0. Okay. Now some of you might remember my review of the Lone Peak 1.5. I was very meh on this shoe. I think it had a lot of problems. I wasn't necessarily a huge fan of the shoe. It was not my go-to trail shoe. But lucky for us, Ultra made some changes to this version and made a new version, the 2.0, that actually improves upon a lot of the dislikes that I had with this shoe, which is a good thing. And boom, this is the result. The Lone Peak 2.0. Because I had so many problems with the 1.5, I was actually looking forward to the 2.0 because I heard that Ultra had made many changes, basically redesigning the shoe from the ground up. The change Changes are pretty damn good. The shoe is a solid, comfortable ride for those long duration trail runs. It should be known that Ultra is known for making zero drop wide toe box shoes. Things that they changed include the new upper, the new midsole, the stack height, the outsole design. They all combine to make a pretty damn good trail shoe. I'm actually really excited about it. While there are a lot of likes with this shoe, there are still some dislikes, and I'm gonna get into the details of all those right now. Things that I like about the Lone Peak 2.0, the upper. Compared to the old upper, the new upper is a delight. It's actually flexible, it stretches, it's a little bit more breathable than the past version because it isn't so stiff and hard and rigid. Gross. But it's a wonderfully adaptive upper that I think is one of the best qualities of this shoe. The midsole. Now in the mid-20s as far as stack height is concerned, the midsole is made of this really great A-bound EVA. It's really soft, plush. It's not quite Hoka-esque, both in thickness and in bounce, but it's super comfortable, super plush. For those long runs, this is a really nice, comfortable shoe. Due to the wonderfully soft A-bound layer and midsole EVA. Traction. Much like the Lone Peak 1.5, this shoe has tons of traction. We have the Chevron lugs phasing both directions for ups and downs. It's just really grippy. You do run into some traction issues with wet logs, wet rocks, but overall I'm extremely pleased with the traction on this outsole. Flexibility. At first, I didn't think this shoe was very flexible, but now having worn in this shoe, maybe 60 miles at this point, it has a wonderful amount of flexibility, which was not the case with the 1.5, so I do have to give them credit for somehow increasing the flexibility of this shoe, especially the more you wear it. The fit. Now I'm gonna say it's not great, but it is a huge improvement over the 1.5. Right here along the midsole and in the toe box, the fit is much much more comfortable. Your toes are allowed to display and they're not inhibited by the upper because it's too stiff. It's actually nice and flexible. The midfoot area gives you a nice good lock on your midfoot. And while I do have problems with the heel cup area, which I will explain a little bit later, the fit is improved over the past version. So those are all likes and those are all benefits. And finally, a lateral rock plate. There's a wonderful little feature right here, this TPU flexible plastic layer on the lateral side of your foot gives you just a little bit more protection on some of those descents where you're hitting on those rocks. Rather than letting them just crunch into the bottom of your foot, it adds just the right amount of protection on the outside of your foot, which in most cases is what you need on those descents. So I like it, I'm a fan of it. It's not all lollipop sprinkles and children's songs for the Lone Peak 2.0, there are a couple of dislikes. Wait. It's still a very heavy shoe at 11 ounces and then some depending on what size you order, it's just a heavy shoe. Granted, on those long hauls, you're just going to be trudging anyway, so it's not like those ounces are going to matter. I notice it, because I do run in shoes that are ounces lighter than this. I would love to see them come out with a version of their one squared shoe designed for the trail, so it adds that flexibility, the lightness, the speed. So yeah, it's just a little too heavy for me. Heel fit. Now this is a problem I've had with a lot of ultras, and that is the fact that the heel feels more like a skateboard shoe than a running shoe. It's super thick, the padding around here is just too wide. Over time, you end up wearing into the heel cup a lot more, so the padding actually goes down, which leaves a huge gap around your ankle. So it's a bit of a problem for me. Really wish they would dial in that heel lock. It's just too wide, too thick. And this is across their shoe platform. I don't know what's going on with it. Heel rudder. That's right. The Lumpy continues to have this wonderful little heel rudder right here along the back side of the ankle. I don't know why. I think it does more damage than good. There's been numerous times on descents where I'm going downstairs or jumping between roots and logs and stuff like that and this catches an edge and totally trips me up. It's a dangerous addition. I really think they just need to cut it off. I've actually heard of people doing that. Taking scissors or taking a knife and actually cutting off the heel rudder. I think it's just gotta go. And finally, durability. It hasn't been an issue for me yet but I am seeing some durability issues here in the upper. We're seeing some fraying and some possible hot spots where holes might form. That's a bummer. I really do like the upper. I think it's 
it's a huge step in the right direction compared to their previous version of it. So it's sad to see that it could be wearing through, but I will continue to log miles in this shoe. Even if I do happen to burst a hole through it, I'll continue to run it. I think it's a good shoe. I'm also pretty sure this is the shoe that I will be running the Oregon Coast 50K in a matter of weeks. I'm confident it can do the job. It's a comfortable shoe. It's good for the long haul. It's good for those long distances. And I'm actually pretty stoked to put it to the test in some pretty rugged weather and terrain. And that is it for likes and dislikes for the Lone Peak 2.0. I, again, think it is a huge improvement over the 1.5. I know that there's a lot of hardcore ultra fans that are just really angry that they changed the Lone Peak 1.5 to something a little bit more cushioned like the 2.0. I understand people's disappointment. I do believe Ultra now recommends the Superior for those who want a more minimalist shoe. This by no means is maximalist, but it is a far more cushioned version than the previous, and I like that. It's not terribly cushioned, it's just enough. I hope in the next round they can cut down on weight, improve durability, and fix a couple of little issues. Tail runner. With that said, it's time to get to the points. Quality. I'll give it four out of five. I think it's a much better version than the previous shoe. While there are gonna be some wear and tear issues and I have some issues with the heel, I'm just gonna round up and say four out of five because it is an improved version that I like much more. Comfort, also four out of five. It's a nice soft cushioned ride. It's great for those long runs. I'm gonna be using it a lot. Big fan, comfortable, cushion, four out of five. Price, coming in at $120, I'm gonna give it four out of five. I think it's at the higher end of my threshold. I do think it's worth the investment. I would say in most cases, the previous version's on sale for half off go get that i do think you should splurge and go for the 2.0 if you are in the market for a shoe such as this with the wide toe box and the zero drop platform and finally looks i'll say four out of five i think it's a good looking shoe i like yellow i think it's bright i think it's cool it's different than what they're normally going for so yeah i'll give it a four out of five that brings our grand total to 16 out of 20 which is a great score for the lone peak 2.0 the brand new version of the lone peak series from ultra i think it's a huge step in the right direction i hope they continue to make improvements on this shoe there are a couple of things i dislike about it i'm overlooking those because i am continuing to run in this shoe so the question of the day goes to you have you run in the lone peak 2.0 what do you think have you run in the lone peak 1.5 and are you concerned about the changes to the Lone Peak 2.0. Are they gonna deter you from getting this new version? Let me know in the comments of this video. That is it for today's review. I hope you liked it. If you did, like, favorite, share, and subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash The Ginger Owner. I'm posting two videos every single week, a new review or film every Friday, and a new live show every single Monday where I bring on guests and we talk about all sorts of stuff related to running, triathlon, endurance, all that good stuff. You can find me on all the social networks over on Twitter, at The Ginger Runner, on Facebook, facebook.com slash The Ginger Runner. Instagram is at Ethan Newberry. And of course, the brand new, bright and shiny gingerrunner.com. I hope you guys are getting out there training hard, racing harder, and partying the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week. God, you are adorable. <laughs> Bye.